A group of Alaska residents are trying to take a judge off the bench after a controversial sentence. 34-year-old Justin Schneider kidnapped a woman, strangled her until she was unconscious, and then masturbated on her. The incident occurred in August of 2017. Schneider accepted a plea deal last week, which includes no additional jail time. It also credited him for the year he spent at home with an ankle monitor while the case was pending. He was not required to register as a sex offender. Schneider did not apologize for his actions, but thanked the judge for accepting the deal. I'd just like to um, emphasize how grateful I am for this process. Uh, it has given me a year to really work on myself and uh, become a better person and a better husband and a better father, and I'm very eager to continue that journey. Attorney Jesse Weber joins me now to talk more about this. So, uh, Jesse, you know, I think people hearing the facts of this case will scratch their heads and say, how did the judicial system allow this to happen? Pretty incredible. I can't believe we are talking about it. But from a legal perspective, it makes sense, even though the law sometimes doesn't make common sense. So he was charged with multiple counts, including kidnapping and harassment, which carries significant prison terms. But the DA made a decision. They said, if we take this to trial, we're probably going to lose the kidnapping charge. She willingly entered into the car with him and willingly went to the area where she was ultimately assaulted. So they made the decision that we're not going to take this trial. We're probably going to lose. Okay, let's do a plea deal. You're going to plead. To, you're going to plead to the second highest crime, the second degree uh, assault, which is a class B felony in Alaska. Sounds pretty serious, but for somebody like him who has no criminal record, the most he could face two years in prison. Now, one of those years, as you talked about, he was under house arrest. The next year was suspended. People are like, what does that mean? Yeah. Why suspended? Right. Well, it was suspended because based upon the guidelines in sentencing in Alaska, which shows there's a deficit in the judicial process there, if a person who has no criminal record and is prone to rehabilitation, the judge and the district attorney can decide, well, you know what? He doesn't have to go to jail. And that's what they decided here. So is that the reason, basically, that the judge gave for that ruling? They feel that he can be rehabilitated. But the major problem is, is this act is not a sex crime. And that's the problem. That's a problem with the legislator. Now, in a one sense, it's a good thing that they never thought about this being a sex crime. On the other hand, this needs to change. These kinds of acts, if you look at the definition of what is touching, mm -hmm. how is this not? touching someone, right. they're going to have to change that. That's the recommendation that they actually have to follow through with. So disturbing. But what is the significance of this ruling, especially given the current political climate? This is the height of the Me Too movement. We see it in and out of the news. We're talking about Judge Kavanaugh maybe not getting on the Supreme Court because of this very instance. So we have a guy who assaulted a woman in a sexual manner, and that can't be classified as a sex crime. This just shows a major deficit in the judicial process and under Alaska law. I think a change will need to be made. And the good part is this is happening in the Me Too movement. So it's getting a lot of attention. And maybe there will be the change, not just in Alaska, but other states that don't classify this as a sex act. So speaking of attention, some Alaskans are now pushing a no vote on Judge Michael Corey's retention election. Here's what one of his most vocal critics had to say. I also believe that the judge had um, discretion. He could have rejected the plea deal. Um, he could have um, demanded a harsher sentence. Um, that was within his discretion, and he failed to do that. He also failed to um, include the victim in the trial. He, um, he, he didn't demand that she had a voice, and he didn't um, speak up for her needs at all. I mean, is what we saw essentially a cautionary tale for other judges who might be considering lenient sentences? You don't want the judge in any case to be influenced by public pressure, mm -hmm. even when it seems like the right thing to do. And he followed the way that the law is set up. But it does create a discussion where judges and attorneys and lawmakers can say there is a problem in the law. I don't want to institute this sentence. I don't want to have these people be out on the streets. Now, yes, he may go to a sex offender registration program and things like a rehabilitation program. But is that enough for somebody who committed this crime and pled guilty to it? Probably not. Well, is there any way that this sentence is likely to change? If he breaks the law. If he breaks the law right now, the, uh, the director of the criminal division in Alaska, John Skidmore, reviewed the facts. He understood the public pressure. He sent out a letter saying, I understand that the, what the controversy is, but I reviewed the facts, I reviewed the sentencing. 
And the judge and the district attorney did the right thing. Yes, some of the commentary from the district attorney was a little wrong, a little colorful language that shouldn't be used, but based upon the law, nothing improper happened here. The only way this guy can go back to prison, if he, go to prison, is if he breaks the law within that probationary period. All right, we'll be continuing to keep an eye on this case and see if lawmakers decide to do anything. I really hope they do. All right, Jesse Weber, thanks so much, Jesse. Thank you.